We'd like to welcome you to this week's edition of the St. Mark's Spark. It's actually been some time since we were able to uh, line up the schedules here at St. Mark with the Spark and making sure to get it out to you all. Uh, so for that, I do apologize. My hope in my last week in the office before I threw a bookmark uh, in our conversation together and know that we will pick up, at least on my end, uh, the Spark in September. We find ourselves in our reading today from the Daily Lectionary. We find ourselves in Luke chapter 15. And this really is perhaps one of the greatest chapters we have in all of the Gospels. It is the story of three lost things. And so we hear about two of them today. So I invite you with open ears and with soft hearts to listen as God speaks to us from Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found the sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This past weekend was Pentecost Sunday. It was also, we know, Memorial Day weekend, celebrating that yesterday and remembering the sacrifices of so many to allow us to gather around and worship the way in which we see fit, to be able to have the freedom to assemble, the ability to speak, and more importantly, to listen to one another. Pentecost is a story about the beginning of the church, about the Holy Spirit arriving, the Holy Spirit that had been present at creation, the Holy Spirit that descended like a dove at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit, though, who comes in a new and a fantastic way, you know, 50 days after Passover, after Easter, 50 days where the Spirit comes in and like a rush of wind comes from heaven, a violent wind. It fills the room. It doesn't just pass through. It remains there. And then there are tongues as if of fire that are on all the people. And they begin to speak in different languages, giving praise to God and very discernible and very easy for those who understand and know those languages to hear what they are saying. It is a fantastic event it is that thing where the Holy Spirit, it finds these disciples, it finds these individuals, it falls on them. And when this happens, as what happens throughout Jesus' public ministry and what we're going to hear, what happens in the Acts of the Apostles, that there is grumbling and there is grousing and they are there are people who are always going to find fault. Because the Holy Spirit is always finding people, Jesus is always finding people, and people are finding their hope and their faith and their love in Jesus and in our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And people who are on the inside aren't that wild about that, aren't that wild and would challenge that God is fighting these people because their God and their box is pretty small. But the message of Pentecost, it is the spirit that comes 
for all, just as Jesus' love is for all. And so we have what Peter, who gives the speech, he says this fulfills what was said through the prophet Joel, Peter talking at Pentecost. He says, in those days, I will pour out my spirit on all, says the Lord. It says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. It says your young men are going to see visions. Your old men are going to dream dreams. It says even among the slaves, both male and female, I will pour out my spirit. It's the Pentecostal message, the message from the beginning of the church and to us today, and certainly moving forward, the message of Pentecost is that we have a God that is seeking us out, a God who is relentlessly pursuing us with this divine love. And so we hear in Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells the beginning of a three-part story. We'll hear the second or the third part tomorrow. The first two parts of the story we hear Today, it is the story of a lost sheep. It is the story of a lost coin. But the first point is, why is Jesus telling the story in the first place? It, it is a story about grace and about gratitude and about all these good things. But it begins as a response to others grousing. We're talking about the Pharisees, or some of the Pharisees, not all of them, but some of the Pharisees who are there, who are the religious types, who really try to hold to the law of who is rightly in and who is rightly out, who is clean, who is unclean, who is worth their time, and who is not. And the scribes also, who were the lawyers, the legal types. And they are grumbling because tax collectors... And other sinners are coming to listen to Jesus. And they're upset because not only are they coming close, but he's welcoming these sinners and he eats with them. To eat with someone, to welcome that, be welcomed into that someone's house. They would say it's sending the wrong message. How dare, how dare he do this because... Because it is a challenge to the status quo. It's a challenge to the way thing, we've always done it, right or wrong. It's the way we've always done it. It's a challenge to everything we hold dear. But it's also showing really about the nature of God's relentless love. The God who seeks us and the God who will not rest until we are found and we are found in Jesus. So Jesus says, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a parable. There is a shepherd who has a hundred sheep. One of them is lost. You don't just write it off as breakage. You don't just write it off saying that oh, I've got 99 and that is enough. You need that hundredth sheep. And so you leave the 99 because they are safe. They're in the wilderness, but they are safe enough. And then you go because you want to find your sheep, but also you want to get back to the 99. And so you are relentless in searching for this sheep. And when the shepherd finds it, puts a sheep on his shoulders, this beautiful image, and he rejoices. But it's not just about his own rejoicing. It is about calling together others because, again, when did the Holy Spirit come to the disciples and come to those on Pentecost? We are told in the beginning of Acts chapter 2, when they were all together, the Spirit comes. When they were all together, the Spirit arrives this new and powerful way. Well, it's not just enough for the shepherd to rejoice. The shepherd calls together friends and neighbors and says, rejoice with me. Rejoice with me because I have found the sheep that was lost. And he says, Jesus says, in heaven, there is more rejoicing than this over a sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. God is not writing any sheep off. And if that didn't get the point across, Jesus says, well, let me tell you a story about a woman, a woman who has 10 silver coins. And if she loses one, does she not light a lamp? 
would you not light a flashlight and go searching everywhere in your house? Would you not open every closet, slide open every drawer? Would you not look under every cushion until you found this thing of monetary value? And when you find it, you don't just keep it to yourself because you are overjoyed. You call together friends and neighbors, and she does here, and she says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that was lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over just one sinner who repents. I didn't get a chance to talk about this as much on Sunday, but I think it is an important point. We have this idea sometimes that the call to ministry in the church, the call to do the work of the church is for someone who wears a robe on Sundays or somebody who has the title of reverend or doctor or pastor in front of their names. But that's not the message of Pentecost. And that's not what it means to be a spirit-filled church. Certainly, God has given me unique gifts, God-given abilities, but it doesn't just start and stop with me. It continues with those who were before. It continues with those who are after. It continues with all of us right now. And so we get the case of the yeah buts with God. We know that there are potential gifts that are there, but we're afraid to open them. We're afraid to share them with others. And the main reason for that is because we think somehow or enough or another, those gifts will not be sufficient. We have a case of the yeah, buts. We think everybody is somehow more spiritual or somehow better than we are, better equipped for this. But the message of Pentecost is is God saying and the Holy Spirit appearing, saying, don't worry about what you're going to say because when the time comes, the Spirit is going to give you words. It's not relying on your own abilities. It is relying on God's spirit and trusting and being open, a vessel to receive this and to share it. So we have this idea that somehow we're not good enough or somehow our gifts aren't good enough or that we have such a sordid history. We have such a problematic, the things that we have done perhaps in our youth or when we were young adults, or maybe something we did this weekend. I don't know. Somehow that disqualifies us from service. But again, it is the Spirit who falls on all. Your sons and your daughters, the old and the young, the slave and the free, it's a message of inclusion for all, and it needs your gifts. It needs your help, that God is seeking you out it's been said over and over and over again that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. And the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin is about that God is not giving up on you. Don't give up on yourself. That God is not done with you. So don't be finished with yourself. That God is going to use you if you would but open your hands. If you would, but open your heart, open your souls, open your life to let that refining fire burn, to let that mighty wind blow. God is seeking after you. And God will not rest until, until you are back in the fold, until you are found like this valuable lost coin. We're going to hear the third part of this tomorrow, the most famous of the three. It's a much longer story because the first thing deals with the sheep, the second thing deals with the coin, and the third thing deals with a child. Beloved of God, may you know that God's love is with you, and may you know that God's love is for you, and may you allow yourself to be used and filled with the Holy Spirit to share this good news of God's love. God's relentless love with others. The world is desperate to hear it. And may God open our mouths and loosen our tongues and give us the word to share and the places to be. May God be with you all.